So uh, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. So, so I'm going to introduce you to this is uh, Buddy Singh. He's uh, co-president of our PTO, a parent of a student who at our after-school program. And Christy Galise is our program director for all of BSD after school mm -hmm. programming. Carly Gunderson is our program director here locally. And Malik Miles, who is our uh, assistant program director mm -hmm. of after school programming. So thanks for coming. I know you got some questions for, for friends here, but uh, we're really happy to have you. Yeah, no, listen, for me, when we're, first of all, I love visiting schools. I, love to, I was at a early childhood center this morning. I got to meet some um, adorable students. <laughs> uh, and talk to parents about um, what school means and having their kids back. And I'm really pleased to be here. Um, I'd love to hear from the folks that are coordinating some of these after school programming because we have to, when we talk about reimagining, that sounds nice, but what does it look like? Vermont gets it. Vermont gets it. Um, after school programming needs to be a bigger part of school experience for our students. Of course, it's great for families, parents to know where their children are. Um, and around uh, educators and, and community partners that um, are planning for these students. So I, I want to hear more about that. We believe the American Rescue Plan funds should be used to support programming like that. And um, you know, we want to hear what's working really well so that at, when I'm in Washington and I'm having conversations with policymakers across the country, I can look to this model and say, well, call over there or you know talk to the secretary in vermont because they're, they're doing it right so that's number one number two i'm impressed with how vermont got i think it's 33 percent of the students within 48 hours signed up five to 11 year olds that to me is a, a function of good communication um good partnership between the school officials uh, uh elected leaders and our pediatricians and our medical folks sharing with parents how important it is for their children to get vaccinated to protect the community. So I'm interested in hearing how those efforts are going. I think about 50% of the 5 to 11 year olds in Vermont are already registered. So like that's another, that's something to be really proud of. So I'd love to hear and, and really we just want to open it up. After school programming, um, what are we seeing when our kids are returning and how is after school programming helpful for them not only from an academic perspective, but I think almost more importantly, from that social emotional perspective. And I'll pause there and open it up to, to whomever. Maybe we can have, talk a little bit about the big picture for the state, and then I'd love to hear from some of the folks. Yeah, and no, I think, uh, no, certainly welcome and Thank appreciate you. your visit. It's great. Um, as you saw this morning, you know, just to draw a through line, I think, between pre K uh, vaccination and after school, what you see in Vermont is that partnership playing out. It's the communication, but we have a long tradition of working together. Let's say a very flat chain of command, but like our team, we work on an integrated basis with our partners at the health department, and we have very close connections to our school leaders and so forth, and that's that's the secret sauce really right. allows us to navigate these, these challenging moments. But we're really proud of our after school program in particular, and it's great that you're here at one of our okay. showcase programs today. Okay. So tell me about it. Well, here in the Burlington School District, we are really thankful to know that after school is seen as that strategy to help support recovery, to help support students getting back into making those social connections. We serve over 1,500 students in after school and summer programs here in the district. And some of the federal funds that we really appreciate the support for, and at the state level, have allowed us to increase the number of community partners that we've been working with, especially over the summer, and increase the capacity to serve more students. We know that now more than ever, it's critical for our students to be in a safe place where we can support working families, provide access to food, and exciting experiences. You know, you, know, you mentioned community partners. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, we, don't, we don't talk about it enough, but our community partners have been, their doors have been closed for a year and a half, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of our 501c3s are these, these agencies that are out there helping our kids. They had to close down for a year and a half, too. So I love when I see programs that engage those pillars in our community and our schools are just working closely. I mean, for the students, they don't know who's the school staff and who's the community-based organizations. That are. They're just part of the family, right? So I'm glad to hear that you mentioned that it, it created a wider net for more, more to join. And I think that's something that Carly and Malik and the team here at Champlain do really well. 
you know, the number of community partners that they outreach to. Do you want to share with me an example? Yeah, um, so far this year we've worked with Kids on the Ball, with Jake Agna, who does tennis. Um, so he's oh, yeah. come in and done tennis for us. We are partnering with the generator across the street where they're doing some steam activities later in March. Um, Grow Family Yoga is right on Pine Street. So they're coming in and doing some yoga classes as well, um, as well as a climbing gym. So we're gonna go climbing <laughs> later this winter when um, we start getting snow. So yeah, we're really utilizing the South End partners right now that we can access for that. Okay. You wanna tell me anything about uh, what, what maybe stands out to you? What stands out for the program? Just in general, yeah, the whole experience and what experiences you've had. Honestly, just the overall happiness of kids when school bell rings and then they come in and line up for after school and they're ready to engage and lead the program basically themselves. It's mostly student led with like teacher guidance for student like interest basically. And you can see that like we have our student planning council that we're really proud of. And this year it was like my first time experiencing it for the first time and just witnessing their ideas come to fruition and seeing that like these kids are actually like functioning members of like the community yes, who can sure. bring something to their own program and have it be something that they want to do that's just something that i love to see yeah you know and um the principal and i have something in common we're both fourth grade teachers and we'd like to think <laughs> we'd like to think that the kids are going to go home raving about the reading lessons that we just <laughs> give in or oh wow my teacher taught yeah. math so great but they're not uh, when we talk to kids uh, how school what they're talking about is those experiences that they had after school the social stuff like you know as a, as a parent um when my kids come home how school good what do you do usually it's what they did in the extracurriculars or in the after school or before school program. Nothing against the experience in school, but that's what kids remember. So by providing that for more students, 1500, that's great. Um, and making sure that students have an opportunity to engage socially and emotionally in a structured setting with community partners, I think that's excellent. I'd love to hear from, from everyone else. I think it's really important to have dad speak from dad perspective on the value of having an after school program that really is just a transition from the school day to a safe space where yeah. we don't have to drive people different places we're here housed in the building pickup happens at the same place where drop off does it's the same trusted adults that you're working with during the school day that they transition to with the after school program yeah so that's why i invited Buddy. great yeah so what i would say is first thank you for coming in um just proud to be here representing the parents and being part of this community. Champlain, we can't say enough about this school and Joe's leadership um, from a parent perspective. The biggest thing for after school, you know, I'll take it from the dad perspective as a professional, both me and my wife work full time. Um, you have to have an after school program or else, you know, if I had to come home earlier, my, mm -hmm. you know, my wife would come over, it would, it would really wreak havoc. Um, with our professional and what we can provide for our family. So it's very important. Sustainability and support from the federal level, yeah. we will always welcome, and I'm sure the district will always welcome. From a dad's perspective, the messaging is huge. If you're talking social, emotional, how am I feeling? They use the same nomenclature, you know, the same terminology. I'm in the green zone, I'm in the blue yeah, zone, I'm yeah. in the yellow zone. zone. Yeah, zones yeah. Of, uh, and you say that at school, but when they go to after school, Everybody's on the same page. Everybody has the same aspect of what's going on with these kids emotionally. And to do that, and that communication is just going to be able to bring more things out of your children. You know, there's more leadership opportunities. There's more learning opportunities. There's mixing of, of grade level where you have older kids that can start to become mentors. You see fifth graders and fourth graders leading the younger kids. And it's all in the same school. So that's not only going to carry over to after school, but the next day they come to school. If a kid is being picked down on the playground or, or something like that, there's a fourth grader that knows that first grader and is to be like, hey, you fourth graders, leave that person alone. Yeah, you know, like, you know, we know to be kind. And, and these messages from school to the after school and then carrying it over to home and all that communication all within these doors is amazing from a parent perspective. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what powerful. you want. That's you know, you talk about the consistency, and I think I'm just looking at it from a perspective of a building leader, right? Staff know it. You, you mentioned the, the consistent language yeah. at every school. Um, that's really important as students move through. It's more likely to stick. 
yep. um, when it's con uh, consistent in different buildings with the community partners, with the school, uh, everyone. And you know, I have to look at the board chair and the superintendent because I think you know it's important uh, the the approach you've taken to make it systemic, not just random acts of partnerships. Um, so th that's great, and I think you know. Another thing that we don't speak enough about is the challenge that parents have had during the pandemic to not only be the teachers, and, but also now as you're transitioning back yeah. um, to full-time work, it's harder maybe to have the flexibility because you're back now. Uh, so having a program where you know your kids are safe, they're learning, yeah. it's more than just uh, they're safe, they're grown. Yeah. Um, and um, you, know, you mentioned the through line, you mentioned consistency. Isn't that what our schools should be? Like hubs of the community, yeah. right? We're, we're trying really hard with, with some of the um, budget proposals to really lift up community schools. Uh, for everything that you said, parents, w w you, you articulated yeah, yeah. best. Um, as parents are working, they need to know their kids are good. They need to know their kids are in a safe environment where they're growing, they're engaging, and they're learning those skills that make them mentors. And, help them grow as, as young people in the community that will be leading the community. So uh, love to hear that, and I love to hear that as a parent you're feeling supported um, and that there's a great partnership here. It's also, too, you know, you're at the dinner table and you say, how was your day? You know, you usually get fine or something like that. Or something, yeah, but if you could say, oh, you know, you hear it's like, oh, I hear you're talking about kindness at school. What does mm -hmm. kindness mean to you? Or I'm sorry, yeah, like this morning we were rushed out the door. I was a little bit in the yellow zone. And then, well, you can say that, and then it just starts a whole conversation that I don't think parents sometimes struggle with at the dinner table after a day of work. So on Saturday mornings when you tell your kids to clean up their room, do they tell you you're going into the red zone? <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you tell me, you know, it's really important that we at the Department of Education adapt to what parents need now. Not that I'm asking you to speak for all the parents across the country, but <laughs> what do we need to know? What should we reinforce? Or what would you like us to know so that when we're making decisions, we take into account what parents are feeling today? Well, again, consistency, um, you know, that we're all in the same place. Communication is always a big thing with any parent. You know, they want to feel like they're being communicated to by their teachers, by their after school, by their administration. And communication is key, and that communication goes from the parent to the child. And here, this is what I'm talking about, all these consistent messages. And, you know, I'm not going to pretend like we have great conversations every day with my <laughs> seven-year-old, but these communication things help that conversation happen. Yeah. And that's what a parent wants. Like, if, you know, if you're trying to figure out how to deal with whatever it's Saturday morning or the weekend or you're rushing around to all your events, if you can speak and calmly and speak in their language and they speak in your language and you're all understanding where you are, all are emotionally consistently, you're going to be able to accomplish so much more as a family, as a parent, as a kid, as a school. And those are all the things. And, and you're well aware of the social emotion. Yeah, it's definitely. And I think, you know, we have an opportunity as we reopen to really do more to make schools places that have reciprocal communication. Yep. Parents are at different places now. You know, we've all experienced trauma, right? Some more than others. So our schools have to be receptive to where the families are. And as much as it's important for us to communicate to the parents, it's also important that we listen. We're designed to listen to what the needs of the parents are, what the concerns, frustrations, fears are. You know, we can't ignore the fact that our parents have gone through this pandemic as well. And, um, you know, schools are the hubs, schools are the communities. and with great after-school programs and good connections and policy that's designed to systematize it. I think um, you guys are great examples of what we want to see across the country. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anything else anyone want to share before? Uh, Jordan, how much time do we have left? Um, we actually have to move to the uh, okay. <laughs> So, let's so any parting thoughts uh, before before we head out? This is a chance, you know, we had the, the moment of closure and now we're, we're starting to, you know, reopen buildings, reopen schools, bring community partnerships, as you've heard. This is an opportunity in time where we have the chance to redesign things in education. We, we can say, we know that we were doing it this way and that was, you know, that was not an effective model. And we've done it this way because that's just what we were used to. And now is a chance to say, to take a step back and say, what is going to work best for student outcomes? community partnerships for families and so 
the, the, the time is now and the opportunity is now. We may not get another one, so yeah. we've got to take advantage so of this opportunity. Yeah. Superintendent? Uh, no, I, I was just going to observe it's really nice to have a secretary who understands these things. I listen to you from your experience, you know, you're able to make sense of these different yeah. aspects of the operation, but you're also able to have that form of national policy that's going to serve us well in the country, so thank you. Let's hope so. Listen, uh, the, the House passed uh, the framework yesterday, um, breaking news, uh, <laughs> but look, you, you, you get it. Yeah. There's, there's funds for after school programming, for community schooling. You're, you're an example of that. Uh, I visited an early childhood center where uh, Vermont is far ahead of so many other states. So in this framework, there's a universal pre-kindergarten for three and four year olds. We're gonna be knocking on your door saying, hey, what's your playbook so that we could start getting some states that haven't even thought about it, engaged in that. So keep up the great work. The students here are lucky to have, uh, you know, the leadership that they have. I know Senator Sanders is a big advocate for uh, these programs as well. He was, uh, you know, really big on the after school program. Um, so you get it. We appreciate what you're doing for students. Uh, they're fortunate to be here and c continue the great work. Thank you. You know who that is? Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> He's President Joe Biden to me. <laughs> um, so I thought, how cool would it be if I can bring cards to the president made by students? Now, not just any students. I wanted the best card makers in Vermont. And I was told that this second grade class is that class. Is that true? Yes. Maybe. Maybe. Is it true? Come on. Yeah. I think it is. I think it is. And be, because you did that for me, and I know you've changed your schedule, are you going to give them a, a lot more homework now because they missed out on stuff? No, we're going to go have some extra recess. Um, but, yeah, I remember that. Good. So what is the most popular recess game in Vermont these days? Monkey bars. Monkey bars? Okay. Monkey bars. What else? Um, helicopter. <laughs> Hide and seek? Okay, good. Helicopter. Helicopter? I, I don't know that one. It's when you swing, 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 swing a jump rope and then you try to jump. Oh, so the jump rope and then you have to. Who's really good at that game? I don't think I would do well with that. I think I'd hurt my ankles. Yeah, well, that's good. Maybe someday I'll come back and I'll watch you play that. I don't think I have the right uh, gear for that today. But listen, I have something for you. These are coins. They're chocolate. They're made of chocolate, so they're better than real coins. Um, and it has a, a symbol of the Department of Education on one side. And it doesn't matter. You're going to open it up and eat it anyway, right? <laughs> so I'm going to give it to your teacher. She's going to give it to you maybe before recess. You can get a little bit more. I'll give you two, do two of them, okay? Two, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> I think there's enough there. Maybe the teacher can get hey, some. Friends. Is that what you have for me? I will give them to you later. <laughs> later. Can you bring that up to me, please? Stand up and get what is your name? Sophie. Hi, Sophie. So how do you spell Sophie? S-O-P-H-I-E. I have a, a niece with the name Sophie, and it's spelled like yours. I'm on the president's face. And Senator Gordon, can I just mention that uh, Angeline is going to be in Washington, D.C. tomorrow, so she wants to drop her card off in person, if that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. Are you, are you visiting D.C. tomorrow? It's a pleasure to meet all of you. I hope you enjoy recess. I hope you enjoy your chocolate and hope you enjoy the rest of second grade. Sounds good. Thank you. Everybody say thanks so much. Thanks, thanks so much. much. Have a good day. Have a good day. Awesome. <laughs> Bye.